when you are deploying an application, consider run application only the run application only build status. So what this means is that when you deploy an application to test and prod, and it has the run application only build status, that means that you cannot go in and edit that application. You can run it as an end user, but if you try to view it in the builder, give you a message saying, uh, sorry, you're not allowed to edit this. Why is that a good thing? Well, it's great because um, it helps prevent edits going into, or modifications going into test and production that maybe sometimes don't find their way back into dev. So uh, you make a change into test, in test or production, and then you know the users are happy, and then you don't make that change back in dev, and then the next time you do a deployment from dev, well, you just reintroduce that bug from earlier. So please try to keep your hands off test and production. I know it's so tempting because it's right there, um, but I think in the long run, you'll have uh, fewer inconsistencies between the environments. Granted, you know, over time there are going to be differences, so uh, you can indeed, um, it, or it's encouraged, maybe every six months or so, uh, try to, or every year, try to uh, sync d test and dev uh, from production. Or maybe if, you're, if you have a, a good system worked out, you can do it once a month or so. That's may probably a little overkill, but it's good to make sure that you refresh objects from production uh, to make sure that you know, all your environments are staying in sync. The other thing is to consider uh, using the file system for your external files. So in other words, um, whenever you have like a JavaScript or CSS file or maybe an image or a help PDF or anything like that, you probably want to be storing that on uh, a your web server or network storage technically isn't as true for Apex 5 as as, uh, as it is true for Apex 4.2 and below. Apex 5 completely overhauled uh, how they manage or how they load uh, files from the database uh, using the uh, Oracle uh, RESTful Data Services listener. But one thing that, that, that always remains true if you're storing files um, in Apex is that there's a database request that has to happen. Uh, when you request a file. So if you store, if you make a static file in Apex, to get that file, it's going to have to make a request to the database. Well, your database is kind of responsible for a lot of stuff with Apex. So if there's some opportunity to not use the database for something, uh, like storing static files and application files, you might want to use that because that's just going to lighten the, the load on your database, which is going to be your bottleneck for scale. Okay. Now, the, the cons here is that um, if, you do, if you're not uploading your files as, as static files through the uh, shared components in Apex, those files are not going to be integrated with your Apex application. So in other words, you have to manually move those files from the dev, test, and prod uh, environments, which could be um, uh, it's just an extra step in deployment. It's not particularly difficult. Uh, it's just another thing to remember to do as part of your deployment process.